God's word this morning comes to us from James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. I invite us to rise together like we always do at Christ's community so that we can honor God's holy and sacred word. We'll read this together in one voice. Ready, begin. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Amen. You may be seated. Let us go to God in prayer once again. Jesus, we need you. We need your Holy Spirit. We need your guidance. So come, Lord Jesus, come into our hearts. Fill our hearts. Guide us. Lead us as we start off the new year in your word, as we start off the new year with our church family. Bless us, O oh Lord. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, amen. amen. Let me start off with this question. Have you ever been scammed before? Can I get a witness? Or have you ever been deceived before? Has someone tried to, to scam you out before? Or more so importantly, has someone, try, has someone tried to deceive you before? There was one time when I received a phone call on the church office line from someone pretending to be PSENG, saying that we were late on our payments. I fell for it because it sounded so real. They rambled off all the right address information and everything. So I said, who do I have to call? They gave me a phone number. And I started writing down that phone number. Something felt fishy. Ooh. I don't think this is right. So in that split second, rather than trust my intuition, I texted our church treasurer, Mr. Ed. I said, text, as I'm talking to him, I texted him separately. And he said, scam, get off phone now. Thankfully, he knew. He knew we weren't behind on payments. He knew that PSENG would, would have sent a written notice if we were in danger of losing service, but I had almost fallen for it. Now I don't pick up any phone calls that are uh, on the church office line unless I know it's the real number, but I had almost fallen for it to the point where I was dialing the number that they told me to dial. And as I was preparing this message, as I was remembering that moment, it made me wonder how many people in this world fall into these scams and actually follow through on what these scammers tell them to do without even realizing how many people actually believe it and do whatever they're asked without even realizing? I shared the other week that our ministry theme for 2023 is step up and step out. Turn to the person next to you and say, step up, step out. Step up, step out. As Christians, we are called to step up and respond with obedience. As Christians, we're called to step up and respond with trust and wisdom. You see, we're not called to just be believers of this faith. We're called to embody and to live out that faith. You see, as followers of Christ, we need to seek the wisdom of the Lord. We need to know his word. We need to trust his power. And as we navigate the daily rhythms of our life, work, and community, and so I believe the perfect passage to unpack that for us is here at the end of James chapter 1. And it's here, I believe, that this passage is teaching us three important reminders 
that help us to step up and step out. The first reminder is this. It's active obedience. If you're taking notes, write that down. Active obedience. We're called not just to receive the word. We're called to respond to that word in an active manner. When you listen to God's word on a Sunday, it's not just receiving it. It's thinking about how you're going to apply it that week. It's called active obedience in how you're going to make that a part of your life. When you pray and all of a sudden God places on your heart a part of compassion, how are you going to actively apply that in your life that week? It's not a reactive obedience. Christian obedience is not reactive. It's active. The biblical Greek word used here for the English translation, if you have your Bibles open with me, it says, do what it says. Do what it says, right? The, the biblical Greek word used here is geneste, which means become or keep on becoming. In other words, when the Bible is telling you, do what it says, are you becoming that? When the Bible says, have faith, are you becoming someone who has faith? If the Bible tells you to, to be kind, are you becoming someone who is being kind to those who need that kindness? If the Bible says, love your enemies, are you loving your enemies? Are you becoming someone who is loving your enemies? That means when you're a doer of God's word, then you're becoming God's word. John chapter 1 verse 1 is one of my favorite verses. In the beginning was the word and the word was a God. The word was God. So when you're reading God's word, are you making that a part of your identity? Are you actively obeying God's word? You see, our calling is not about being sideline Christians. Our calling is not about being bench warming Christians. Our calling is to become more and more like Christ. You see, our words and actions need to exude Christ. What's the danger if we don't live into that active obedience? What's the danger if we don't act actively obey God's word? I love it when the Bible has all the answers. Verse 22, we're deceiving ourselves. So if you're not actively participating in your relationship with Christ, if you're not actively obeying God's word and applying that into your daily routine, you are deceiving yourself. Now that now the word deceiving from the biblical Greek is paralogosimai, I can't even pronounce it, paralogosimai, which means to cheat or to deceive by false reasoning. Think about it. If, you, if you're looking at the passage with me right now, deceiving ourselves. So in, a, in, in other words, you're, you're deceiving yourself with fake news. You're deceiving yourself with false reasoning. L let me try to put it this way. When we Christians are not living in active obedience, we are being deceived by false reasoning. Ooh, that hits deep. That's far more deep than just excuses are excuses. When we Christians are not living in active obedience, we are being deceived by false reasoning. You see, the deception comes from thinking that we are good enough Christians. There's no such thing called good enough Christians. The deception comes from thinking that we have done enough for the church. Well, I have done X, Y, and Z for the church, so somebody else should step up. There's no such thing called doing enough for the Lord. That's fake news. We as a church, we as people of faith, we as Christians need to step up and step out and live in active obedience because if we don't, then we're fake Christians. It sounds harsh, but it's true. If we are not actively obeying and practically living out 
that trust and faith in the Lord, we are fake Christians. I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to be too harsh. I'm being, I'm just sharing with you what the Bible says. This is what the Lord is teaching us. And that's why I pray that in 2023, 2023, wow, that something clicks different for us where we actually stop using excuses and where we step up and step out actively in our faith in however way the Lord sees fit. Because I don't know about you, my hope and prayer is that I don't, I don't want you to be fake Christians. I want, you, I want you to get a taste of this real, authentic, active Christianity. We need to do more. We need to be more. We need, we need to live in active obedience as God's people. Second reminder is this. Some of you might chuckle, but I think this is a good reminder. Don't forget the mirror. Let me read the message version of how verse 23 and 24 is stated. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in the mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea who they are and what they look like. When's the last time you looked in front of the mirror? And you're like, ooh, I have more gray hair. Or who? there goes my hair. <laughs> Sorry for those of you that's a sore subject. <laughs> or for some of you, it's like, ooh, I gained a couple pounds. Or ooh, ooh, I lost some weight. Oh, I look good. I don't know about you, but when you look at the mirror, it tells you the truth. Sometimes it's the hard truth. I can tell you the truth that when I looked at the mirror this past week, I said to myself, wow, I gained a lot of weight this past year. My wife was walking around by, the, by me in the hallway and she said, yep. <laughs> the mirror does not lie. Sometimes when I get stressed and I don't get enough sleep, I get cold sores easily. And when I look in the mirror, the mirror does not lie. When we get confronted with the hard truth, for example, like me gaining weight, then I hear loved ones telling me, take care of your health. But sometimes when I hear that, I don't want to hear it. Because I don't want to accept the reality of the hard truth. And then guess what? I'm going to forget what I see in the mirror and what I look like until I see the mirror again. You see, in order to step up and step out, in order to be active doers of the gospel, we need to never forget our spiritual mirror. In other words, we can't be afraid to be confronted with the truth. The truth, for some of us, might be we need to read the Bible more. Public service announcement, if you ever need a one-year Bible reading plan, we have multiple copies ready for you at the info desk in the back. Maybe some of you need to be confronted with the truth of you need to pray more. Maybe some of you need to be confronted with, you need to show grace to your spouse more. No one said amen. <laughs> Maybe some of you might need to be confronted with the spiritual truth of, you need to love your enemies more. I'm sure there are times when we read or hear the God, word of God, there are times when we fall into guilt and we're like, ooh, that sounds a lot like mama's nagging, so you just flip the page. But sometimes we need to confront that. When we read the Bible, we sometimes might feel like we're looking into a spiritual mirror that reveals our darkest, deepest secrets and what we really look like. A book that I use for premarital counseling sometimes is, is titled, When Sinners Say I Do. 
I was walking with a, a, a groom and a bride, and, and the groom, after about two sessions, told me, I hate this book. I said, why? He said, I know I'm a sinner. I don't need to hear it over and over again. You see? You see why I'm using this book? And he said, no, I don't want to hear that I'm a sinner. By the end of the sessions, he said, now I know why I need to hear I'm a sinner. We need the mirror. Because when we recognize that we're a sinner, what, what happens? Then we yearn for God's grace. We yearn for God's forgiveness. We know that we fall short. And we say, I need Jesus. The mirror of the word of God goes beyond surface level. The mirror of the word of God looks deeply into our hearts and exposes everything about us. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 and 13 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Ooh, it joints and marrow. And it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare from before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. When it comes to our faith, when it comes to our relationship with Christ, when it comes to the Bible, we cannot read it from a distance. Have you tried looking at the mirror from a distance? And then all of a sudden you walk closer to the mirror and you're like, oof. We can't look at our spiritual mirrors from a distance. The Bible demands our obedience. Jesus is not a God who only shows up when we need him. Jesus is a God who makes us show up even in our discomfort. Jesus is a God who demands our obedience. Jesus is a God who calls us to follow him. Here's our third reminder, our last reminder. Freedom. Freedom. Verse 25 but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they had heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. If you ever thought the word of God, reading the Bible was boring or reading the Bible was all about rules and laws and what have you, think again. God's word is freedom. God's word gives you freedom. God's word sets you free. Amen? Obeying God's word and having an active obedience gives you freedom. Freedom from what, Pastor James? Well, freedom from the bondage of sin. You read God's word and you go, wow, I am free from sin. You read God's word and you're like, wow, God forgave me? He gave me a second chance? That's freedom. When you read the Bible and you're like, wow, I deserve to be in hell, but by God's grace, I am free and I am experiencing a second chance, that's freedom. God's word gives you freedom. Freedom from the burdens of guilt, freedom from the temptations of the world. There is freedom in Christ. Christianity is not just the quote-unquote religion. Christianity is an opportunity where you get a relationship with Jesus so that you can experience freedom. That should cause you to step up and step out, to live into that freedom. I'll, 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 let, me, let me use uh, our, our American lingo for a second. We have freedom in our country. We don't have religious persecution. When we go to the voting polls, we vote. When freedom, we don't, have, we don't have people that threaten us to not vote in one way or the other. We vote our conscience. We live in a free country. Thinking about that, but now think about this in the spiritual sense. We live in freedom when we're in Christ. We can't take it for granted. Because if you think about it in the worldly sense, there's countries out there in the world that don't have freedom. 
this morning, right now, on this Lord's Day, there are people out there that are dying just because they want to just get to church. There are Christians that are being persecuted. We got freedom. That should do something to you. That should impact you. That should change your life. That should transform you so that you can step up and step out on our faith. We're not called to do that just because it's an obligation. We're given this opportunity and privilege to live into freedom that only Christ can give. Jesus taught us in Luke chapter 11, verse 28, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. That's my blessing for us, church, for you and I. May we be those who not only hear the word of God, but obey it. If we read, research, and remember the word of God, it means nothing if we do not act on or obey the word of God. It means nothing. As a church, if we come to church, we hear the word of God, and we don't do anything about it, it means we're fake Christians. It means we're deceiving ourselves. You see, God's wisdom in our life is demonstrated in our actions, our output. How are we living our lives? Are we living a life that exudes Christ? My wife and I were talking about this the other day, and we were sharing about how one of the best compliments that we received was not, oh, you guys have a beautiful family. Oh, you guys have beautiful children. I know we do. But that's not the best compliment. What we shared in gratitude was one of the best compliments that we received ever and one of the best compliments we yearn to receive, that's our prayer this year, was you, you guys exude Christ. We prayed that together. Right when the clock struck midnight, we had a little moment of prayer together, my wife and I. And that was our prayer for this new year. May we exude Christ this year to the people we encounter. Church, do people know you're Christian? Do people know you love Jesus? You go to your workplaces, do people know that you have a relationship with Jesus? If they don't, maybe something needs to change. Why are we ashamed of our faith? We shouldn't be. This past week when I was in Texas, I had an opportunity to visit my cousin who's like a dear brother to me. He has his own law firm. And he has all these assistants, paralegals, what have you. And I had a chance to visit his office. They looked at me and they said, Pastor, welcome to the office. I said, how come they know I'm a pastor? And he said, well, I told you. I told everyone you're a pastor. I said, does everybody know you're a Christian? He said, yeah, everyone in the office knows I'm a Christian. I said, what do you do? He said, I pray in my office every morning. My assistants know not to bother me from 8 to 8.30 because that's when I pray. I'm like, wow. And then he joking, he said, it's not a joke, but he said, it's to the point where some, one of my assistants who has a bad potty mouth, every time she drops an S-bomb, she says, oops, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Are you exuding Christ like that to the point where people know you're Christian, that you love Jesus? As a church, are we exuding Christ in our witness here in our communities, here on Long Island, here in our state, here in our country, here in our world? My hope and prayer is that this year is different. My hope and prayer is that people, say, I don't want to hear people say, oh, go to that big church on the corner here, there, go there in East Iceland. I don't want to hear that. I want to be able to hear testimonies where people say, hey, you know about that church in East Iceland? You know about Christ Community Church? Man, they exude Christ. That's a far better compliment. And that can only happen when we step up and step out. I pray it's different for us as a church this year. I pray it's different for me as a pastor this year. I pray I'm, I'm a pastor that's active in faith this year. That's my prayer. My personal prayer, so I hope you keep me accountable. Call me out if I don't. 
call me out if I have a boring sermon or something, you know? I pray it's different for our families represented on our church roster. I pray it's different for our communities, our workplaces, our, work, our schools. May we put our faith into action so we can crown our Lord with many crowns. May we step up to the plate. And may we step up and step out this year and let the church say amen. 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 Let us pray.